Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and this is the State of VR for November 2020, your monthly recap of the most prominent VR gaming news. I hope you've all had a good month and that you're gearing up to enjoy the holiday season. It's been a busy month for me despite not uploading that much content. I've been busy upgrading all my camera equipment and hopefully you've seen the benefit of those upgrades in these last few videos. I'm always striving to make the best content I possibly can for you all and if you have any feedback, suggestions or ideas, please feel free to contact me as feedback is always welcome. It's also been a busy month for the VR industry and I've got a lot of news to get through in this video. I'll be talking about the new Pistol Whip 2089 DLC along with my experience testing out the PlayStation VR with the new PS5 console and answering the question, is it worth upgrading to the PS5 for VR right now? I'll also be giving you the details on some awesome updates that we got for Quest 2, along with some news about a rumoured Quest 2 jailbreak. And finally, I'll be highlighting two of the biggest VR game releases coming in December for us all to get very excited about. But before we get into the news, I want to highlight Among Us as my VR game of the month. Now, a couple of weeks ago, a group of us VR content creators got together to play a recreation of Among Us in virtual reality, which was built in VR chat by a creator named Jar, and we had such a great time with it. If you're not familiar with Among Us, it's a game that originally released on Steam two years ago and mostly went unnoticed until about a month ago when it just blew up on Twitch. The premise is simple. A group of players are placed on a spaceship, most are crewmates who have to work together to complete tasks, or whilst some of the players are selected at random to play as imposters, whose job it is to sabotage and kill the crewmates without being discovered. You can't talk to anyone during play until someone finds a dead body of a crewmate or calls in an emergency meeting, and it's here where the game comes into its own, as friends can lie and backstab one another whilst convincing the group to eject players from the ship. And the best thing is, is that you can play this recreation of Among Us in VR for free, as it's a world built within VR chat. It's actually the most popular world in VR chat right now. This can be played on both PC or Oculus Quest, although I've heard some rumours that the Quest 1 players have experienced some performance issues, so bear that in mind. If you're looking for a fun, free social experience, check out the VR recreation of Among Us, available in VR chat. Whilst on the theme of free experiences, this brings me nicely onto my first bit of news, and that is about Pistol Whip. As of today, the 1st of December, the latest Pistol Whip DLC called 2089 will be releasing as a free update to the game on both Oculus and Steam. The PSVR update will be coming later. This short sci-fi story campaign adds five new tracks to the game with awesome comic book style story sections in between. Each track plays slightly differently, which keeps the gameplay feeling fresh and interesting. Now, I won't say any more than that as I don't want to spoil anything, and I would definitely urge you to go check it out for yourself. But if, like me, you grew up loving 80s action movies like The Terminator and Robocop, you'll definitely get a kick out of this short campaign. Hats off to the team at Cloudhead Games for releasing this awesome update and releasing it for free. So now, let's talk about the PSVR and the new PS5 console. Last month, during the State of VR, I said I wasn't that interested in picking up a PS5 due to the lack of information about Sony's future plans for VR. Well, turns out I just couldn't help myself being a tech magpie that I am. Seeing something new and shiny was just too much to resist, and I was lucky to be able to get hold of one from Amazon after refreshing the product page for over an hour on the day of release. The new console does work with the original PSVR headset as long as you have the required PSVR camera adapter. You need to apply for one through the PlayStation website, providing the serial number of the PSVR control unit, and they'll send one out for free. I'll add a link in the description down below if you need one. Now, I mostly bought the PS5 for traditional games such as Demon's Souls and Spider-Man, but when I heard that one of my favourite VR games, Blood and Truth, was getting a 4K update for the PS5, I had to check it out. And I have to say, I was a bit underwhelmed. I even had to double check that the 4K update had been installed, as I thought I might have done something wrong. I even pulled out the PS4 Pro so I could compare the results side by side, and the difference in my opinion was really marginal. The game did load faster, which was nice, and it 
felt a little bit smoother as the game now runs in 90 hertz instead of 60 hertz reprojected to 120 hertz but it was difficult to notice the difference in the game's textures even when comparing them directly side by side with the ps4 pro it may be looked ever so slightly better, but certainly not the huge improvement that I'd hoped for. Other PSVR games will also benefit from faster load times due to the new SSD in the console, and some games that feature dynamic resolution like Dreams will automatically scale resolution to take advantage of the console's higher horsepower. But I think the main problem here is that despite the new upgrades, the original PSVR headset itself is still limited to 1080p, so it doesn't really benefit from these upgrades that much. I mean, to take full advantage of the new PS5 console to play the latest games in 4K, as the developers intended, you'll want to invest in a new 4K TV. The same can be said about the upgrades in Blood and Truth and other VR games if they get the same treatment, although sadly we just don't have a higher resolution PSVR headset on the horizon anytime soon. So right now I would say if you're a PSVR fan, it's not worth upgrading to the PS5 just to play PSVR content just yet, but I do have to say I'm loving the new console to play traditional flat screen gaming content. And now let's move on to the Quest 2 as it had a great month with some awesome updates. And the first feature of the update is native 90 Hertz mode. Now this is exclusive to the Quest 2 and allows the headset to run the home, guardian and pass through in 90 Hertz by default and apps that have been updated to support it can also run in 90 Hertz mode. Games like Beat Saber, Superhot, Echo VR, Racket NX, Space Pirate Trainer, Waltz of the Wizard, Job Simulator and Vacation Simulator are just some of the games that announce support for the 90Hz mode coming soon. 90Hz mode is also now available for Oculus Link which came out of beta this month and it also has new settings in the Oculus dashboard so you can select the mode depending on your PC's performance. It's good to see that Oculus Link is finally catching up with the awesome virtual desktop. If 90Hz wasn't fast enough, John Carmack himself teased this month that the Quest 2 would be capable of up to 120Hz. Now whether or not this will ever be native on the Quest 2 is unknown at this time, but I'd certainly like to see a 120Hz mode added to the Oculus Link. Along with this update, Oculus also launched Oculus Move, a system level fitness tracker for both Quest and Quest 2 that works across all VR games and experiences that will estimate how many calories you've burnt during your VR session. Especially now with everyone being stuck at home, this is going to be really useful to keep track of home workouts in games like Beat Saber, Fit XR and Pistol Whip. I'll be doing a full video on this soon to find out exactly how accurate Oculus Move is compared to other fitness trackers available on the market and to also find out which is the best VR game for burning calories, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Oculus also released a new game casting feature which allows you to cast your VR gameplay from your headset directly to your browser. Now you need to be using a Microsoft Edge or Chrome browser and then just head over to oculus.com forward slash casting and then in the headset you can select an option to cast to the computer and you'll get a square output in your browser along with the game's audio. This will be useful for some of you budding VR content creators out there that takes a little bit of pain out of the recording process. And finally, Oculus released an app gifting feature, allowing you to purchase games or experiences through the Oculus Store and send them directly to a friend as a gift. This is something that I've wanted for such a long time, so I'm so happy this is finally going to be available, especially now as both my brother and my dad have Quest 2s, meaning that I can send them some awesome VR games as gifts over the holiday season. Say what you want about Oculus, but they're continuously updating and adding new features to their platform. And I, for one, can't wait for more significant updates like this one in the future. Whilst on the subject of Quest, I wanted to quickly talk about a jailbreak that had been reported to be working on the Quest 2. Now, this came about after a group known as the XRSI, which stands for the XR Safety Initiative, confirmed that a researcher from the XR community had gained root access to the device, bypassing the Facebook login requirement of the Quest 2 headset. Now I discussed this on the F Reality podcast at the time this news broke and if you're not familiar with the podcast we have a weekly VR podcast every Saturday which goes live called the F Reality podcast where we talk about topics like this at length. And back then I said that I was highly skeptical as no evidence of the jailbreak had actually been shown. 
and it seems that the claim was indeed false. A user by the name of not underscore XRSI posted on the Oculus Quest subreddit stating, the confirmed jailbreak on the Quest 2 is fake and does not provide root access to the device. A third party was tasked by the XRSI with replicating the jailbreak, including investigating the possibility of other methods of jailbreaking the device, but they told me after two days straight they could not verify that it was ever jailbroken in the first place. I've linked to the whole subreddit post in the description down below if you want to read the post in full detail. Now, while I appreciate some people out there would be interested in a jailbreak for the Quest 2 if it bypassed the Facebook login requirement, but I do wonder how useful it would actually be as you would likely lose access to the Oculus Friend system, the Oculus Store, and other online functionality, including future headset updates like the ones I've highlighted in this video. And my other concern is, wouldn't this just promote piracy on the platform, which would put developers out of pocket? I'd love to know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Next up is a quick update on Microsoft's Flight Simulator, which released back in August this year, as we got some exciting news this week, stating that the VR update will be releasing on the 23rd of December, just in time for Christmas. And to make things even better, this VR update will be available for free and for all PC VR headsets, and not just the Windows Mixed Reality platform, as they teased before. Now this is great news for all those VR flight sim enthusiasts out there, and I'm also really excited to check out this update myself. The thought of just taking to the skies and soaking up all the beautiful scenery in this accurate recreation of our entire planet is really appealing right now, especially when most of us are stuck at home and unable to travel. Having played the game on just a monitor to get a feel for it prior to this VR update, it's an amazing moment when you fly over your hometown and begin to recognize local landmarks from the sky. I can only imagine what this is going to be like in VR, and I can't wait to try it out for myself. There's an amazing documentary on the making of Microsoft's Flight Simulator from the team over at Noclip that I would highly recommend if you're into this game. I've added a link to it in the description down below. My only concern is how taxing this game in VR will be on even the most powerful gaming PCs. I'll be putting it to the test using the Quest 2, Valve Index and the new HP Reverb G2 when the update drops, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And the final bit of news is that Medal of Honor is just a couple of weeks away now, as it will be releasing on the 11th of December on both the PC Oculus Store and Steam VR. Now, although the game at launch will only be available to those who have a VR-ready gaming PC, there is some light at the end of the tunnel for those Oculus Quest owners out there, as recently a user by the name of WiiUray posted on the Oculus subreddit, I just wish they had this working on the Quest 2 natively. And this sparked a response from a representative from Oculus, stating, we are going to try once the PC SKU is finished, and they went further to say that Respawn Entertainment are fully involved and on board with this ambition. Now this totally makes sense as the sales of games on the Quest platform are far outpacing Oculus PC VR sales right now. Like I've mentioned before, you only have to go and have a look at the amount of reviews on the Oculus PC store compared to the Quest store to see the huge void between them. Now I know that this isn't a clear way to indicate sales, but the sheer difference in numbers of reviews is telling. Whilst this is great news for the Quest community, it does make me a little bit concerned about the future of PC VR content funded by Oculus. I mean, why would they continue to invest in content for the PC platform if the market is all about standalone? I really hope this won't be the case, but I guess only time will tell. Respawn have also confirmed in their latest trailer which released this month that the game will feature a gallery mode whereby the team at Respawn captured footage in VR 360 of some of the most iconic locations from World War II, such as the beach in Normandy, along with interviews from survivors and veterans. This game is really shaping up to be something special whilst paying homage to the veterans that fought in the war and I have faith in the team at Respawn to make an incredible VR experience. I'm also very excited to see more information about the various multiplayer modes as this will keep the player base coming back for more. As soon as I have access to the game, I'll share all the details in a dedicated video on the channel, but let me know if you're as excited as me for Medal of Honor above and beyond in the comments down below. And that is it for the State of VR for November 2020. The next State of VR recap will be coming in the new year, and let's all hope that 2021 is a better year for us all. 
I'll be uploading more VR content in the meantime, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you've got any questions about any of the topics that I covered in today's video, please drop them in the comments down below. If you're excited for VR and you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, keep safe and well, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.